Hi everyone and welcome back to the Hollywood Actors Guide to Surviving the Film and Television Industry. This is your host, Jennifer Lynn Warren. First up, about your acting, you need to treat your audition as if it is work. If you do this, your brain gets tricked. Ever notice you do your best work when you know you're working? When you're actually on set, the acting tends to come a lot easier. Your performance is just there. But in an audition, you go in and you do it and you're like, what the heck just happened? It's because you're not treating your audition as work. And something funny happens in our head. If you go into your audition and you're like, I am shooting, I've already booked this, uh, they're treating it like a, um, goodness, like a soap opera. So I only get one take, maybe two, with no rehearsal, which is what a soap opera is like, by the way. So if you ever want to do a soap opera, you should know you don't get a rehearsal and you get one, maybe, if you're really lucky, two takes. And so if you just go ahead and start treating it like work and you're like, I have this thing, you just happen to also be the costumer and hair and makeup person and all that other fun stuff. Trick yourself, you know, it's it's acting as if, right? As if we live in a world in which actors do their own hair and makeup and this is a performance, that this is a even a theater performance, so you only get to do it once in front of that live audience you're about to go in front of. And you'll find that this weird little trick will help you honestly relax in the moment, have that confidence and have that magnetism that casting directors always talk about that they are looking for. On the business side of things today, on Actors Access, I know I've been talking about Actors Access a lot, but it is so vital to our career, is it not? Um, actors, and, and some of you guys are like in England, and I think your thing is called Spotlight. You know, you all have your version of the thing that every actor is on to get work. It happens to be because I'm based in the United States. Ours is Actors Access, and right behind it is LA Casting, though they've had so many problems. I'm not sure that platform's going to last much longer, but I guess we'll, we'll just see. But you need to keep your reel updated. And that seems so obvious, but if, especially because you haven't been working a lot in the past year, possibly because of the pandemic, what happens is, is if you update your reel, Actors Access is likely, because they do their own sorting of actors when they submit, casting can go in and change it. So... It, the default for Actors Access is pretty much who has the most recently updated profiles that have pictures, um, what are uh, headshots, reel, and that five second, I can't remember what it's called right now, but where you, like, you click on it and you get like a preview of what the actors really like and they charge us $5 for it. It's ridiculous, but there it is. It puts you at the top of the pack. So if the casting director isn't really one to go in and sort it the way they want it, if you wanna be at the top of the re recommendations, whether you're submitting yourself or your agent submitting yourself, one of the things to do that is to keep your reel updated. I know it's expensive, but it's the cost of doing business. And if you're not getting into the rooms or your auditions have slowed down and you're wondering why, and you haven't updated your actor's access in a while, that is something you can do. Now, I don't know if you update your headshot, if it has the same effect or whatever. I do know it does with your reel, just because I watched it happen in real time. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it probably happens with everything. And maybe even just updating your resume. I probably should have tried that first. Maybe I'll see if I can get that to uh, work out, but maybe adding a special skill or taking one off that you, you know, don't really do anymore. That might work, I'm not sure, but I do know I am sure that the real updating works or adding a new clip, for instance, does work. And finally, in our survival segment, when you do have that opportunity to be booked on a film or TV show, 
and it's not a one day thing. You, you finally get yourself a decent role and you're wondering, you know, how to prepare that role. And you know, because you've been reading and studying this business that 99.999% of the time, everything is shot out of order. Have your agent or your manager ask production for a shooting schedule. Now know that the shooting schedule, especially if they haven't started shooting yet, can change. But oh my goodness, is it, it is so nice if you know that your first day of work, you're gonna be doing scene 42, and your second day of work, you're gonna do scene three. That way you're not prepping scene three and you're not ready for scene 42 yet because you didn't know you're gonna do scene 42 first, and you can make a whole calendar. So if you know what dates, which scenes are gonna be shot. You can even print out a copy of, of those um, sides for you from the script and put them in shooting order. And then I'll put either a post-it note or a little tab, uh, the date in which it's gonna be shooting. So I know if I have like a whole week to prepare a scene, if I have a big scene coming up, I can make sure I have enough time. If I have a little scene and I know it's not gonna take a lot of time, but it's at the end, I may not worry about it for a while, but it's just a good way of figuring out when you need to be off book where for everything <laughs> it, when you do start booking those bigger, longer, recurring, larger roles. I want to thank once again weaudition.com for sponsoring this episode. If you need a reader or you want to be a reader and make some money, go on weaudition.com. With promo code HAG25, H-A-G-2-5, you will get 25% off, so it's only $7. And I am so bad at math. Seven, 25% off, $7.50 a month. <laughs> You'd think I'd remember that. Only $7.50 a month. A lot of readers on there will read for free, and that's unlimited. You can read with somebody 24 hours a day if you want. You need someone with an Australian accent, choose Gary. Gary lives in Australia, and he does a great Australian accent, even though he's originally from England. But we love his accent, so you know he's one of my go-to guys. If I need somebody like that, boom. Barry, Barry in uh, Oklahoma, he's got this great Southern accent. You may have heard Audrey Moore talk about him on Audrey Helps Actors because he's helped her out with some of her auditions. One of the nicest guys, such a great reader, so patient, great notes. So many great readers on We Audition, everyone. And I'm there as well. So if you see me pop in and say hi, I'd be happy to help you with your audition. And that's it. That's all I have for you this week. Break a leg out there, get vaccinated, and remember you are not alone. <laughs>